I'm Professor Jonathan Twining from Eastern Nazarene College. I'm exploring Costa Rica with my colleague, Dr. John Cassell from Northwest Nazarene University and his team of herpetology students. We're traveling down the Pan American Highway from the Quetzal Education Research Center in San Gerardo de Dota to Hacienda Baru National Park along the Pacific Coast. Hacienda Baru is a national park encompassing 815 acres of wetlands, beaches, and rainforests with seven kilometers of hiking trails. Many people come here to observe the unique mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and insects of the lowland rainforest. While the ladies head straight to the beach, I accompany Dr. Cassell and his student, Jaime Sandoval, on a walk through the rainforest. Along the way, we encounter several reptiles, including this four-lined whiptail lizard. Did get that one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Cassell points out one of several species of anoles from this part of Costa Rica. He uses his fingers to show Jaime and I the dewlap, a fold of skin that is usually brightly colored and is used by the male to attract a mate. Another indication that this is a male is the presence of two hemipenes used for reproduction. Jaime go. finds a juvenile scorpion box turtle. These turtles have a hinge in the shell on the underside, called the plastron, that allows them to retreat into their bodies. Later on in the evening, we were able to see the adult of this species. Near the end of the trail, we came across a large wooden structure filled with sand like a big sandbox. This is a sea turtle hatchery. Sea turtle eggs are brought here, buried at the appropriate depth, and are allowed to hatch before being returned to the ocean. This reduces mortality, giving the young turtles a better chance at survival. On the dirt road next to the beach, we spotted some black, spiny-tailed iguanas. These lizards can reach lengths of three to five feet. They are excellent climbers and eat mainly vegetation. They are also the fastest running lizards, reaching top speeds of 21 miles per hour. After about an hour of walking, we finally came to the beach. Time for some fun in the sun. We're on a night hike through the lowland rainforest at Hacienda Baru National Park in Costa Rica. I'm with Dr. John Cassell of Northwest Nazarene University and his herpetology students. Dr. Cassell is in Costa Rica to study amphibians and has been recording the calls of several frog species that have never been recorded before, as well as photographing amphibians for a new publication. Crossing the trail are a column of leafcutter ants. These ants have a mutualistic relationship with fungi in the family Lepiotaceae, which is farmed inside the ant colony. The leaves are brought back to the nest to feed the fungal garden. A large ant colony can take up as much as 6,500 square feet and contain 8 million individuals. Spiders are all around us on the trail. We can see their eyes shining in our headlamps. This particular individual is a member of the wandering spider family amongst the most venomous in the world. Glad I didn't try to pick this one up. A large king swallowtail accompanied us for a short time on the night hike. These butterflies have a wingspan of four to five inches. Dr. Cassell is searching for a frog in the tall grasses and leaves along a stream. On the grassy stems, he finds a number of juvenile green iguanas. 
When fully grown, these lizards can reach five to six feet in length. They are herbivores and are active during the day, and they are also excellent climbers. Dr. Cassell has spied an important frog species, and he's moving in to capture it by hand. This is a Rosenberg's tree frog, also called the gladiator frog. These frogs reach lengths of just over three inches. They get their name because the males can be particularly aggressive, fighting over suitable nesting areas. Dr. Cassell points out the spines located near each thumb on this frog that are used during the reproductive cycle to grab and hold on to the female in the position known as amplexus. The team has captured a frog known as the common rain frog. These medium sized frogs can be identified by the yellow spots on their inner thigh. They are often found in lowland rainforests on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica where they are an important prey species for certain snakes. Dr. Cassell thinks he may have found another type of rain frog called Crowgaster crassidigitus. He will have to carefully photograph this frog from a variety of angles to ensure proper identification. Dr. Cassell is emerging from a small stream with the savage's thin-toed frog, sometimes called a smoky jungle frog. This frog species can reach lengths of over six inches, making it Costa Rica's second largest amphibian. The loud call of this frog sometimes attracts one of its major predators, the caiman. The largest amphibian is the marine toad, sometimes called a cane toad. They are typically six to eight inches in length, but the largest ever recorded had a length of 15 inches. Back at the Quetzal Education Research Center, Dr. Cassell's team has been out recording the call of a species of robber frog, Crowgaster melanostictus. The team has captured a male and a female specimen and are in the process of recording their snout to vent lengths and weights. Afterwards, Dr. Cassell will use special equipment to take photographs of the frogs for publication. We hope you've enjoyed this journey as we explored some of the biodiversity of Costa Rica. Join us next time for more adventures and thanks for watching. Pura Vida!